Hi, my name is Brittany. I am a program coordinator for River Raisin Institute. Today, I am actually going to be teaching you for the, uh, the program Butterfly Buddies. So, I am actually at a prairie at Rouge Park. So, it's in outskirts Detroit, but it's a great area for butterflies, insects, and other pollinators. So, you'll see behind me and what you saw just a few seconds ago, there are so many different types of plants that are good for pollinators. There's Joe Pie weed, milkweeds in this area, lupin, rosin weed, Queen Anne's lace. So this is rosin weed. It's a great plant. It looks a lot like black eyed Susans or even some people think they look like sunflowers. You have bee balm. Some goldenrod has even started this time of the year. So the nice, pretty yellow flowers deep in there is your goldenrod. Great late summer, early fall flower. Over here is some milkweed. And, oh, I think I see a little butterfly coming our way. Why, hello, Miss Butterfly. Oh, I almost ran into you. Hi, hi. This is perfect. You get to meet a butterfly and you get to learn about her lifestyle, what she goes through in her life. It's a lot. What, but what types of plants she likes. Oh, this is going to be great. So, hi. Hi. So what type of butterfly are you? I'm a Carter Blue Butterfly. Do you know what, what type of plants do you like? I like all the ones that I was recently hearing you name. I got so excited hearing some of those. So I came over to come visit. Perfect. Did you know, kids, that wild lupin is the host plant and the nectar plant for carner blue butterflies? And carner blue butterflies are actually one of the most endangered butterflies we have in Michigan. Next to the, the there's a couple other types, but it's one of the top ones that are really endangered. So Sometimes it's really hard to find places to lay my eggs. But places like this, I can find them all over the place. It's a really beautiful place. I love it. They have so many flowers for me to feed off of the nectar, and I can find some of those pretty lupin around here and lay my eggs on them so my so caterpillars kids, we're going to ask the butterfly some questions. So, what's your life cycle? What do you go through to get to a butterfly stage? Well, first, my mother laid me on an egg on the lupin plant. Then, I crawled out, became a caterpillar, and for a period of time, I would go around and I would eat as much as I can to become as big and strong as I can, and then I'd find a safe place I'd build a cat, uh, cocoon, or a chrysalis is what a lot of people call it, and then I would come forth as a butterfly, and then I'm, after that I only have two weeks to live until I have to find a mate and lay my own eggs. And by that time, it's pretty late into the summer. Yeah, yeah. So, when you see a butterfly, it's only been alive for so long, mm -hmm. and you'll actually see more than one butterfly being hatched throughout the summer season. Most butterflies actually will be wintering as an egg or as a butterfly in native prairies, in woods, in trees. Um, only a handful like the monarch actually migrate. So it's actually really important that you have native prairies like this for them to be able to come out the next spring. That's why you are seeing fewer and fewer butterflies throughout your lifespan every year. There's fewer and fewer of them because there's fewer prairies and they need them. Yep, and I only have a very short time to live, so I have to not only watch out for predators, but then find safe places like this to be in. It's a lot of work for a little butterfly. I have to get going because I don't have a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, get going, hurry on. So kids, this has been great. You got to meet a butterfly, you got to see a prairie. Maybe you can ask your parents and your other relatives to take you to native prairies and open areas wooded. There's oak prairies, oak savannas, there are so many different types of prairies that you can see in your own area. This is one of them and it's doing amazing. Um, and if it wasn't such a rainy day, we'd probably see dozens upon dozens of butterflies and other insects flying around. But I'm wearing a rain jacket because it has been raining a little bit, but there's, this is still a great place for butterflies. So you can, what some things that you could do at home though, to help out with butterflies is you could plant native plants. They're so important. Ornamental plants, the plants that annuals, you can't, you don't really see all that often. Those aren't as great for butterflies and bees, other pollinators and such. 
you really need annual peren or the perennial natives are really important because your butterflies need them for host and nectar plants and you can plant those in your own garden with your family so whenever you get the chance go to a nursery a local nursery and look up some native plants it'd be a great way to help them at home so we'll talk about more live here in a few minutes or in a few seconds but um, I'm glad I could bring you to a native prairie. So, see you soon. Hi kids. So, we are going to be showing you another type of pollinator garden today. So, I just showed you a prairie but this is something that you can do at your own house or something much smaller. This is quite big compared to most people, but this is a pollinator garden. It's filled with all different types of plants that are beneficial to uh, bar uh, birds, butterflies, bees, hummingbirds, even bugs such as beetles. So some things you can do to help, as you see here, it looks like a bird bath, but there's rocks in it. By putting rocks in the bird bath, you're actually allowing the insects to crawl in and drink water without drowning. It's really quite helpful. Over here, you see what is called a butterfly house. And so this butterfly house is helpful to not necessarily only butterflies, but all kinds of insects. Because when it rains, when it's cold, or even just a cloudy day and they want to just try and get some relief, they can go into the butterfly house. It's a safe area for them to go. Something else that's been, uh, that you can do is put pieces of wood. So this piece of wood is a great place for insects, bees even included, can go in there if they need to get place to, uh, a place to hide and protect themselves from the weather, or some of them might even make a beehive in it. So, talking a bit about plants, so here you have these beautiful white daisies. They are great for butterflies and other insects. You have lily. Lilies are another plant that most of your parents probably have in their yard. Here's some wild onion. Beautiful type of plant. Oh, here's one of my favorites. It's called echinacea. It is one of the most popular plants. It's also a great plant for birds. Some birds, such as the American goldfinch, when they dry out in the fall, the seeds on the top, the birds will eat them. Over here is what's called prairie dock. Moving along, and over here, you have what's called black-eyed Susans. They're a very common plant to find in most yards, but they're still beautiful. They add a nice splash of yellow to your gardens. In the back over here, you can see there's some milkweed mixed in. Milkweed is another great plant. It's what you'll find is best for monarch caterpillars. This is common milkweed, but there's swamp milkweed, there's all different types of milkweed beyond just those few. And then one of the other things you can do is install a bee hotel. Ooh, you can see some bees are using it. So bee hotels are really important. Same thing with, with the butterfly house. This is also beneficial because in the winter, most bees, they may not have a hive somewhere, and so they'll need some a tree or someplace else to put their hive. And so this is a great place for them to stay safe when it gets cold or when it rains. So there are plenty of things you can do for butterflies and other pollinators, such as, like I said, planting a garden, a native pollinator garden for your house and yard. So here in a few seconds, we'll talk to you soon and we can talk about more about what you can do at home to help pollinators. Have a great day. It's a 
black swallowtail you see on this pink flower here. A male black swallowtail. important that pollinators such as butterflies pollinate the flowers. It helps for fruiting bodies, for vegetables and fruit, flowers, for nectar. Pollinators are so important. You wouldn't have food if it wasn't for pollinators.